Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for Beauty and the Beast, which came out in 1991, 30 years ago. It's the third movie in Disney's renaissance, the 30th Disney animated movie overall, and here I am reviewing it as a 30-year-old man. Man, the planets must really have aligned for me to be reviewing this movie right now. Anyway, this movie is based off the French fairy tale of the same name and follows a young woman named Belle, who is the daughter of an inventor in a local town who everyone assumes is just a crackpot. The inventor, not Belle herself. Everyone just thinks Belle is kind of a weirdo because she's obsessed with reading, she tends to herself, and she does not care at all for the town's hunk, Gaston, who, hey, he might be good looking, but he is as dumb as a bag of bricks. So one day, Belle's father, Maurice, leaves town for a bit, but he gets lost in the middle of the woods, finds himself at this castle where he is kidnapped by a beast. So Belle manages to find him at this castle, and in exchange for her father's freedom, she offers herself in her father's place as the beast's prisoner forever, which doesn't really work out for Belle because, you know, she's an internal prisoner. But it works out for the Beast because years ago he was cursed by a witch to become this beast and he has to try to fall in love with someone and get that someone to fall in love with him. But he has some serious attitude problems. So the bulk of the movie involves these two characters trying to form a bond and fall in love with each other. So like I said at the beginning of this review, this movie is 30 years old. Same age as me, although I'm technically nine months older than Beauty and the Beast. It was released in November of 1991 and my parents have told me that this was one of the very first movies I ever saw in a theater. I wish I could remember it and it's a damn shame that I actually don't remember much of this movie growing up. I had the VHS tape but I didn't watch a whole lot of it. Again growing up with Disney most of my exposure was funny enough with the golden age and silver age of Disney animation, not the renaissance. So I didn't actually watch this movie from start to finish until its 3D re-release in 2012. After The Lion King was re-released in 3D in 2011 and just made a buttload of money, Disney decided to re-release some of their other animated movies in 3D, one of them being Beauty and the Beast. The Lion King was re-released in 3D as a means to promote the upcoming Blu-ray release. By the time Beauty and the Beast was re-released on 3D, it was already available on Blu-ray, so I thought to myself, you know what, it's probably cheaper to just get the Blu-ray, and plus, I can own it forever, so I'm going with the Blu-ray. So once I actually watched the movie from beginning to end, I found myself quite mad. Not at the movie itself, but mad at the fact that this wasn't a movie that I watched constantly growing up, because it is a masterpiece in every sense of the word. This really is not only one of the greatest Disney animated movies that has been made, but it's my third favorite Disney animated movie overall. I think everything about Beauty and the Beast just hits on all cylinders. The animation is just absolutely gorgeous. And I can't tell if it's just the Blu-ray or just the movie itself, but they really fine-tune the animation for this new era since movies like The Black Cauldron or even The Little Mermaid two years earlier. The character animation on your main players is certainly up there from Belle, Gaston, The Beast, Lumiere, Cogsworth, Mrs. Potts. Uh, the Beast is animated by Glenn Keane and it's such an amazing design. Uh, just very monstrous but somehow elegant, especially considering how the Beast evolves throughout the movie as a character. And the art direction is astounding. Uh, the village itself is pretty typical, but the Beast's castle is just beautiful to look at. There is so much detail in the Beast's castle that you could just pause the movie to pick up on all the details. It's that incredible. The characters themselves are really good also. Obviously you're going to have the very memorable side characters like Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts. I already mentioned the Beast himself and it's funny how he just starts off as this selfish, arrogant, and just 
monstrous being and then later on throughout the movie he becomes more civilized he's more caring he's more selfless but i also love a lot of the facial expressions that the beast delivers whether he's confused pigging out over some soup nervous as hell it's there's a lot of great facial expressions with this character i mentioned your film's villain which is gaston and in any other disney movie Gaston would probably have been the hero and the Beast would have been the villain. But in a genius role swap, Gaston is the film's villain. And he's not really sinister or clever or scheming at all. He's just a dumb jock. He sees himself as the town hero. He feels like he can get whatever he wants. And in this case, he wants to marry Belle. But the lengths he'll go to try to get Belle to marry him are just so despicable. And something crossed my mind when I was re-watching the movie for the review. If this was remade in live action in the 90s or even the early 2000s, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if Gaston was played by Bruce Campbell because he just kind of has that Bruce Campbell sensibility to him except he's an unlikable prick. I mean, no disrespect to Luke Evans who I think does a fine job despite how I feel about that movie overall, but I think Bruce Campbell would have killed it as live-action Gaston. And then we come to the beauty herself, Belle. And over the last 10 years, I've noticed that there's a controversy brewing about this character. And the big controversy and debate overall is whether or not Belle suffers from Stockholm Syndrome. And I gotta say this right off the bat, no, no, this movie is not about Stockholm Syndrome at all, and Belle does not suffer from it. Stockholm Syndrome is defined as a captive developing positive or even romantic feelings for their captor, and that's not really what goes on in this movie. Because Belle offers herself to be the Beast prisoner in exchange for her father's freedom. Even though she is a prisoner, she's allowed to wander throughout the entirety of the castle except for the West Wing, and she and the Beast barely spend time together. That is until the Beast saves her life, and she brings him back to the castle, and Belle ends up being grateful for the Beast saving her. So you might think, oh, that's Stockholm Syndrome right there, that's the beginning of it. Not really, because Belle doesn't really develop any positive feelings towards the Beast until the Beast himself starts to change. There's even an entire musical number dedicated to how these characters are starting to feel about one another and how the beast is starting to improve himself and be less beastly. And then we get to the part of the movie where the beast releases Belle as his prisoner. If she was really developing Stockholm Syndrome, she would have stayed. But the reason the Beast releases her is because she saw through the Beast's mirror that her father was in trouble. So she leaves immediately once the Beast says, I release you as my prisoner. And the reason Belle even goes back to the Beast is because Gaston and all the townspeople are marching towards the castle to try and kill the Beast. So she goes there to try to save his life. And one final note about this movie. If Belle really had Stockholm Syndrome, she would have fallen head over heels for Gaston the second he locked her and her father in their house. And that's not what happens at all. So the whole notion that Belle has Stockholm Syndrome and therefore she's not a good character I think is total bullshit. I can see why people have a problem with Ariel and the Little Mermaid. Those problems don't really bother me in the slightest, but every criticism that people have with Belle and any association with Stockholm Syndrome, just get out of here with that because that's not what this movie is about. But putting that rant aside, Belle as a character is one of the better Disney princesses out there, much more than Ariel in my opinion, because she's not really whiny, she's more mature, and this is really the first Disney movie where the princess and the prince actually spend a lot of time together and build their relationship. They don't just instantly meet after a day or three days and they instantly get married. They work towards it. It starts out pretty rough. And we're not really given a clear timeline on how long these two have been building up their relationship. But it feels like it's been going on long enough to where 
they really do love each other, and it's probably the first believable romance in any of these Disney fairy tales. So I really like Belle, and the chemistry that she has with the Beast is really one of the best that Disney has come up with. And of course there's the songs. Uh, Alan Menken and Howard Ashman are back to write the songs, and three of them got nominated for Oscars. The opening song, Belle, Be Our Guest, which is such a beautifully well choreographed number, and Beauty and the Beast, which actually won the Oscar. That entire sequence in the ballroom is just a marvel of Disney animation. The entire ballroom is computer generated, but it's stylized in a way to where it can look like 2D animation, and combining that with the animation of Belle and the Beast dancing is just mind-boggling. It's why this sequence doesn't work at all in the live action adaptation, because the thing that blew everyone's mind with that sequence in this movie is the animation. And that same sequence in the remake doesn't work half as well because it's live action. I hardly have any complaints about this movie. The most I have are just stupid little nitpicks like when the caretaker comes in to collect Maurice and take him to the crazy house, the entire village is already geared up with torches and pitchforks before they even knew about a beast. Like, that's a nitpick and something that if I really said was a legit criticism, I'd have to slap myself across the face and just say, shut up, Alexander. So if it isn't clear by now, my rating is get off your ass and go see it right now. But since this is one of the most popular Disney movies of the Renaissance, Chances are you've probably seen it a lot, especially if you're in my generation. I think it's just a masterpiece in terms of animation, music, characters. It's my 42nd favorite movie of all time. And there's a damn good reason why for 18 years, this was the only animated movie to be nominated for Best Picture. I mean, sure, now we have Up and Toy Story 3, and as much as I love those two movies, and I actually love Toy Story 3 more than I do Beauty and the Beast, those movies were nominated when there were 10 slots for Best Picture. And I kind of feel like those movies got nominated because the Academy just needed to fill those slots. The fact that Beauty and the Beast got nominated at a point when there were only five nominees that year is impressive. And even though it didn't win, it's much like when Sigourney Weaver got nominated for Best Actress in Aliens, or Johnny Depp got nominated for Best Actor in Pirates of the Caribbean. Sure, they didn't win, but it's a milestone that they got nominated to begin with. And the fact that Beauty and the Beast got nominated for Best Picture at the time it came out is a win in itself. So without a doubt, this is one of Disney's greatest, and truly a tale as old as time. And there you go, that's my review for Beauty and the Beast, my 42nd favorite movie of all time, and my third favorite Disney movie overall. Now next week, we are finally getting into not only my favorite Disney movie of the Renaissance, but my favorite Disney animated movie, period. And that is 1992's Aladdin. I have been waiting so long to review this movie ever since I made my top 100 list and ever since I reviewed the Guy Ritchie remake from 2019. Next week, I'm finally going to check it off the list. But first, I want to know what you guys think about Beauty and the Beast. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for Beauty and the Beast. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.